When it comes to making complex programming simple, nothing beats the DX18. Its built-in sequencer is a perfect example. The sequencer lets you use two different functions to create a series of events that you activate with a single switch. For instance, you could assign the gear switch to initiate a complex sequence of events involving a model's retract system and landing gear doors. As many as five sequences, lasting up to 30 seconds each, can be created for a single model. You can add time delays between events in a sequence and adjust the speed at which each event takes place. But that's just the beginning. You can also program specific events in a sequence or trigger changes in other functions like flight modes, dual rates, or expo. In a landing gear extension sequence, you could have the opening of the landing gear doors trigger a change from cruise to landing flight mode. In the same sequence, the extension of the landing gear could trigger nose wheel steering. This allows you to make incredibly complex configuration changes while touching as few controls as possible. To show us how this works, Chris Hume of Horizon Hobby will demonstrate how the sequencer has been used in two different models. I want to show you uh, one of the, my favorite features really of the DX18, the sequencer function. I've got two examples, one a P47 and something a little bit more custom that I've done on my Ultra Bandit. So on the uh, Ultra Bandit, I want to explain a few things before I get into the actual setup of what I'm doing. There's one servo that actuates an air valve, uh, retracts the gear uh, up and down, and then there's a button valve on, on the same servo that closes the door. This model was set up uh, using kind of a legacy system of, of double duting one servo to accomplish two functions, um, bring the main gear up and then close the door. Uh, we accomplish that by slowing the servo down and the disadvantage of that is it makes the whole uh, gear sequence very slow. With this new sequence function built into the DX18, we can actually time things exactly how we want. Let me go in and show you exactly what I mean. Going into the sequence function, I've already set this up, so I'm using sequence three here, activated on switch A. Um, and you can see I've got four seconds in the forward direction and three seconds in the reverse direction. I'm only using one of the two servos that I could adjust on this sequence, and that's channel A, um, named S3A. And it's activating X plus one channel. Um, that's where my gear valve uh, servo is plugged into. Um, if I go to the next page, um, what you see here is a time window, uh, the length of which is set on the previous screen for each direction. So in my case, I had the forward direction lasting four seconds. I can set that anywhere from what says normal, which is like a switch, all the way up to 30 seconds, which would take a long time to sequence through there. So I will go back to four seconds. And then also remember that these, in this direction, these are the servo outputs for two servos, the S3A servo in this case and S3B. So remember plus 100, zero, and minus 100. It's the output of the servo. And that's based on the travel adjust setting uh, set in the uh, servo setup menu. So if I were to go back to, for example, the monitor or the servo setup, just to show you, um, on my X plus one channel has now been renamed S3A. And you can see that uh, the little mini monitor actually takes into account the sequencer I've built in. This is in the gear down position. The gear are gonna come up, it moves immediately to that 75% point and then jumps to 100. So the, all of that sequence is actually built into the monitor now. So one of the cool things you can do with this is use the sequencer as, uh, to activate a mix. In my case, I have a nose gear steering mix set up to my rudder, and I will show you how to do that. Come in here to my mix, and you can see AUX3 is my nose gear steering mix to the rudder. Just come down here to switch and turn that on to my sequencer, S3A. And you'll notice there's five segments of time, and as that sequence is running, I can choose where I want the mix to be active. When I put the gear down, I only want it active at the very end, so I'm gonna turn one off. 
So now you can see in this position, my mix is running. Box three is moving over here. And when I put the gear up and this moves off of it, the mix stops. So you can play with the amount of time that uh, it takes to transition to this by uh, adjusting the sequencer. To set up the P47 sequencer, we're going to enter the function list and select sequencer. We'll start by using the first built-in sequence and activate it by selecting switch A. Uh, in my case, that's my gear door switch, back left of the transmitter. You could use any input uh, available on the radio. You notice the next selection choices down here are the forward and reverse. And that's talking about the direction of the timeline when you activate the switch. And you'll see more detail on that on the next page. But for now, um, I've got it set up uh, position one for the forward direction, position zero for the reverse. Next thing we want to do is just put a generic speed in. Right now it's set up for five seconds. That's fine. And you'll notice we're driving two channels. Uh, a is the doors and B is the wheels. And we need to go in there and tell it, well, which servo is on doors and which is on wheels. Box one will be doors, and in this case, gear will be for the wheels. What you see on this page are the two channels, basically one for the door and one for the wheels, one on top of the other. Each box um, represents the output from plus 100% to minus 100% with zero in the middle. Uh, you'll notice five numbers, zero through four on the top. Those are basically time points that you can adjust the output over here on the right-hand side. Uh, in this case, for example, uh, the door starts off at plus 100 percent, goes for a little bit, and then goes to minus 100, indicating the door opens. Um, you'll notice that the wheels are at plus 100 until a certain amount of time has passed with the doors open and then they go to minus 100. So that's the gear coming down. At point two, the doors close as the, as the, the gear remain down. Actually flip the switch and you'll notice the time marker traveling across the screen, indicating what's, when the outputs are changing. Doors open, wheels down, doors closed. To learn more about the Spectrum DX18 and to find a retailer near you, visit SpectrumRC.com.